Hey everybody, Jake here from Bearded Gear, and I am ready to do my full review on the Finch Tycuna. Um, you can hear Preston fishing behind you as he, he walks behind the camera. We are out fishing today on the Eel River. Anyway, while I'm here, it's the perfect opportunity to talk a little bit about this guy. So this is the second model that I've experienced from Finch, although I experienced it right around the same time as the 1929. And the first model I had from them was the Runtley. I have a yellow belly Runtley, and I just love <laughs> that knife. As a little, small, secondary, like fifth pocket or back pocket carry, it's been an amazing knife for me. Great utility, great blade shape. And so as soon as I experienced that one, I saw that this one was coming soon. They were starting to release photos of it, and I've been excited for it ever since. And I was very lucky in that Finch sent me one to check out. And it's just, it's a really, really cool knife. So on here, anatomically, let's talk a little bit about what we're working with. We have this bright orange G10, which I think looks pretty cool. And then we've got a really nice coated 154 cm blade and it's a interesting shape it's a great grind but you can see it's got kind of this swell out toward here it's not a recurve this is a flat but then you've got a ton of belly right up here leading up to the tip and then the whole back or the spine of the knife is this perfectly flat surface and it just it has this really cool shape i, I really quite dig the way this blade looks the G10 is also sculpted, so all of the edges and corners are knocked down, but then you get this kind of like rock pattern on here, I guess you would call it. Let's see if I can get the light to pick that up a little bit. It's a really cool way to give this some, I wouldn't even say it's much more grip, but a little more grip because this is like polished smooth G10. This isn't like a grippy peel ply G10. Inside we've got two liners, one on each side, and they have been coated black as well. Same coating as the blade. They're not hollowed out, they're not skeletonized or anything like that. It's just solid liners through and through. But this knife, because it's so small, <laughs> isn't heavy. I would say it could be lighter for its size. Sure, if they had taken those extra steps to, to hollow out the internals, then yeah, it could be lighter than it is. But it doesn't feel too heavy for what this knife is and kind of how I carry it. Uh, beyond that, we've got a nice mill titanium black pocket clip coated the same as the blade and the liners and then we've got black hardware there are these pivot collars that are satin which i think just kind of gives it a nice pop especially because the loom back here in the crest which finch has become a little bit kind of famous for i'd say a lot of people really like that they they also um they're related to the watch company raven watches so it's cool to see them using loom on their knives anyway i feel like the satin uh, around the pivot kind of accents that crest well. I like it quite a bit. And yeah, so everything on here is either orange or black, and then there's the loom and the pivot collar that kind of have a little pop of shine to them. Um, the laser etching or engraving on the blade looks really good, where they've put Finch on there. On this other side, we say 154 cm. I don't think it says anything. Oh, it says the model name as well, Tycuna. And yeah, it's a, a fairly simple construction. Beyond all that, we just have a little G10 backspacer back here, and it's a small little guy. The G10 is perfectly matched to the other G10 that's used on the handle scales. So it really aesthetically just ties all in together. Every piece of this knife seems like it has a relative elsewhere on the knife, and it just, I like that. None of these parts feel mismatched. Everything is, is very uh, specific to the knife itself. So. Let's talk a little bit about ergos, and then we'll talk cutting performance, carry, all of that. Um, ergonomically, this knife works very, very well for me. You can see the profile of the handle. It's a fairly simple, neutral shape. For me, I'm able to get all four fingers on here. It's tight, I don't have extra room, but I can get a full four finger grip on this knife. On the Tycoon, or sorry, on the Runtley and the 1929, those are, neither of those are full four finger knives for me, they're smaller. So this is the biggest Finch I've experienced thus far. Uh, we'll see with their upcoming models whether they start playing with bigger knives, but so far, everything is pretty small. This, being a full four finger knife, is as small as it can get for me, and still have me get all of my fingers on. 
you can choke up a little bit here onto that kind of jimped spot where it's the flipper tab while the knife is closed and it does give me a nice index point to choke up and get real close to the edge for detail work. I like that quite a bit. All of their knives so far that I've experienced, uh, actually does the 1929, at least the Runley and this one, <laughs> have that same shaped flipper tab that allows you to choke up onto it and the jimping is actually appropriate there in my mind for that reason. So I like that quite a bit. There's a little more jimping here just on the lock bar release and it's not aggressive jimping. I don't really feel it much when I'm holding the knife in a standard hammer or saber grip. It's more so just to give me the traction to release the lock. So I appreciate that that's there as well. Other than that, there's no real jimping. It's just the flipper tab and uh, that lock bar relief. I guess you could kind of call on the backspacer. There's, there's a couple little lines there. I, I would say that's more aesthetic <laughs> than anything else. I don't feel that in any grip. So yeah, there it is. But the grip on this knife is great. In hammer grip, it's good. Saber grip, it's good. Draw cut, it's good. Reverse grip, very good. The reverse grip might actually be my favorite grip for this knife, oddly enough, just because of the way that this flat goes for my thumb. It feels really, really good. And uh, yeah, it's a, a very neutral handle, so it's gonna be comfortable in any position that you hold it. <sighs> Let's talk a little bit about cutting performance. So this 154CM, as far as I have seen, is done really well both on my 1929 and 154CM and on this model. I've done a fair bit of cutting so far. Out here, just last night, I was doing a little bit of like whittling on some wood with this and the 1929, um, just to test them a little bit further. I've done more typical EDC type stuff and they've just done really well. I've had great edge retention. I haven't sharpened or stropped either of these in 154CM yet and it's, it's done well. The edge itself, the grinds are done pretty good. It's not like the thinnest, sliciest little knife I've ever experienced, but it's certainly not thick either. It's, it's a really good grind that gets to a reasonable thinness behind the edge to be, I, I wouldn't have hesitation about using this for anything up to like medium duty. And anything heavy duty, I'm not picking a knife in this size and category anyways. So for zip ties and uh, like whittling and stuff like that, it's gonna be fine. And I, I like the profile that they've put on it. I also like aesthetically the way the grind looks on here because we've got this flat, but then there's a, a nice kind of flat saber grind below it. And then up top, we get a little bit of a swedge too. And the coating that they've used is just a little bit glossy in a way that kind of just shows it off well. I don't know, I really dig it. In pictures, I, I wasn't immediately super drawn to the aesthetics of this knife, but in person, looking at it, I, I just love it. I like the proportions of it as well. I think the blade, you get an, an excellent amount of edge for the size of the knife closed. It's just, it's a really good ratio that we're working with here. So let's move on a little bit to carry. Um, this knife carries very, very well. I will say, for my personal preferences, I would appreciate it if this had a deep carry kind of loop over style clip. I'm just not a huge fan of milled titanium clips. I think it looks good. It's a, it's a good looking clip on here, but this knife is slim in this direction. It's not crazy slim this way, but it's not thick either. It's a reasonable thinness and it's fairly light because it's kind of small. It's pretty short this way. And so the dimensions in pocket make it carry really, really well. And the clip functions great for a milled titanium clip. I just personally would love it if it was a loop over deep carry clip and got me right to the butt end of the knife here so that it was a, like disappeared visually into the pocket and all you saw was clip. With this, it's not a ton that sticks up, but you got a little bit of knife that sticks out of your pocket. And for some people, that's a huge deal. For me, it's not the biggest deal. I'm just, I think if you've watched enough of my knife reviews, you'll see that I prefer deep carry clips and that's the way I land on it. But again, as milled titanium clips go, this one's done well, it's functional. There's plenty of gap between clip and scale for the pocket to ride in between. It's got good retention. I haven't had any issues with it slipping or anything like that. And uh, the profile of it as well, the knife itself, it's just, it's a great size when I carry it 
front right pocket as like a primary, which I've done once or twice. It's been very good to be able to still get to my wallet. This knife is small enough though that typically when I'm carrying it, it's as a secondary. So I've been carrying it back left pocket. That's just lately where I keep my secondary knife for my, my current carry setup. But yeah, so I think the only thing I haven't touched on yet that's really important to address is the action. Because these little finch knives have a fantastic way of just packing in real good, sorry, I thought I heard my, I've got my, my line going next to me. They have a real crisp detent, they're on bearings, and they just have fun, snappy actions for especially how small they are. So it flies open with authority. It's not like stupid drop shutty where it's just gonna guillotine shut every time, but for a fidgeter like me, someone who likes to play with their knives, this action is just a blast. The flipper tab and the way that it's shaped, it's got this nice, this little ramp up here is just perfect to get the right amount of purchase. It's jimped, but not too aggressively. So you just get the, this great pull down on it and you just light switch it open all day long. You can even kind of push button it. It's a little bit uncomfortable because the flipper tab does come to kind of a point there. But yeah, you can push button it in and it, it does great that way as well. The detent is very crisp and it's dialed really well. And it just, I don't know, functionally, this knife is not only fun to play with, but then when it does lock up, it's very solid. I don't have any side to side blade play here. I don't have any front to back. It's locked. And in this range, <laughs> these are not much over a hundred bucks. I've had plenty of knives with construction somewhat similar to these that just don't have the sturdiness that this one does. And that's one of the things that was immediately apparent to me with each of the Finch knives that I've owned. Starting with the Runley, even smaller than this, it's it almost seems on the surface, like before I experienced one, a little gimmicky to have like a stubby little secondary carry, tiny, almost utility knife, right? And they're bright colors and funky blade shapes that are cool to look at, but I didn't know how really usable it was gonna be. And every single one of their models has been built exceptionally well. They have really fun actions. The, the fit and finish is great. They carry well. Like, they're just actually really well thought out knives. And so I've said it before, I'll say it again. I really enjoy seeing a brand new knife company like Finch, who this is their second of three models and I have each of them, currently own them, and every single one of their models is different from one another. They don't just feel like slightly different variations of the same knife. They each feel like their own totally unique knife, right? And they're all built well, they all function well, they all carry well. I like each and every one of them. And it's just cool to see them just kind of keep hitting home runs one after another, knife after knife, and making such cool stuff right off the bat as a brand new knife company who's new to the scene. So I just really appreciate them. And having communicated with the guys behind Finch, Spencer specifically, quite a bit now, they're just actually really cool people who uh, I get along with well. And that means a lot. More and more I'm finding, I love finding makers and designers who I just I have some kind of connection with beyond just liking the knife. It makes the knife more special when you meet the people behind it and they're cool and you appreciate them. And this is one of those cases where I just, I really like the guys behind it. I like each of the products that they're putting out. And so I'm just really excited <laughs> with this being like, it, it was basically this year, like 2020 was when I started even hearing about Finch. I'm pretty sure that's when they released the Runtley was within this calendar year. So another two, three years to see what Finch will be is exciting for me. I like the idea of wondering where they're gonna go. I've already seen on their site, they've got some, some tease photos of another model that's coming and looks really, really cool. It's more similar to the 1929 than the other two, but I'll let you go check that out and, and see what you wanna see. I am sure as soon as it comes out, I will get one because they just, I really like their knives. I really, really do. So this is the Tycoona. It is one of my three favorite Finch knives currently in existence. It's hard for me to rank which ones I like most. I feel like this one being a little more kind of mid-sized, whereas the other two are tiny, this one makes it in my pocket a little less than the 1929 and the Runley, if I'm being totally honest, because it's a little, it's pushing the boundaries of secondary knife for me, but it's still a little small for me to be a primary. 
If this was like a three and a half inch blade, then I'd carry this knife as a primary pretty frequently, I think. Um, or if it was dialed down to be the size of a Runtley, then I'd carry it more <laughs> as well. But that's, it's nothing against this knife itself. It's just my current carry patterns and what ends up in my pocket size-wise that's making the Runtley go in my pocket a little more and the 1929 go in my pocket a little more. But I've had this knife for a couple of weeks now I've taken a, a, my time a little bit to do this review because I've had so many other things to make sure I, I reviewed to, to send back to people. But every time that I have put it in my knife, which has been, or in my pocket, which has been quite a few at this point, I've really enjoyed carrying it. Every time I've pulled it out to cut with it, I've really enjoyed cutting with it. It's just a very intuitive knife to use. It's approachable, it's a little bit fun in this bright color. like. It's not intimidating to people when you pull it out around them. Usually it's actually kind of a fun conversation piece. People see this and, and they're drawn to it in a, an exciting way. And I think that, I don't know, it might stem from their, their origins as a watch company before making knives. Like, I think they bring some of that element of an eye-catching presence to their designs that just looks nice and classy and well-made and has little features that draw your attention in and they, they've done really, really well so far with designing knives that people appreciate. So I'm one of them, count me in that camp. But anyway, this is the Finch Tycuna and it is an awesome knife. I really do appreciate it. Check out Finch if you haven't yet. I'll link down below to their site and to their Instagram so that you can see their stuff. I think on their site they've even linked to some of my other reviews of their products. So really cool guys, I appreciate the support that they've shown me being a relatively small channel who's just growing. Um, so thank you to them and thank you to you guys for watching and checking it out with me. This has been fun.